Hello, everyone, and welcome to another broadcast from the Gate Church. This is Jeremy. Today, we are going to continue our look at love from 1 Corinthians 13, and we are starting to get into what love is not. So just remember, if you are doing these things, you are not in love, and you are not operating out of the will of God if you are operating in these things. So I'd like to take negatives, and I don't like to focus on the negative of the negative so much. Um, so we're, we're going to kind of look at is like, we'll talk about the negative a little bit, but then we'll go into the, how do we stay away from this thing rather than just don't do it? Because if there was a red button in the room and I put a big sign on the red button that said, don't touch this red button, you're going to want to touch the red button. And that's kind of, it's what you look at, what you emphasize is kind of what you get sometimes whenever it comes to teaching, whenever it comes to telling people about things. So we are going to look at uh, 1 Corinthians 13, and it says, love does not envy, it is not boastful, it is not conceited. Now, I kind of put these things together a little bit um, because envy and boasting kind of come out of the same root, and that is not trusting God as your source or not knowing God as your source for whatever you're envious and boasting about. Now, if you're envious about something, you see it in someone else, you see it in in the world, in someone else's life, um, and you realize that, hey, I don't have that thing, so I am, there's a difference between being jealous for something and being envious about it, and being envious about it is just having that hardness of heart of, hey, I don't have that, and I want it, that should be mine, in a way that is, um, it is, What's the word I'm looking for? It's negative towards that person. It's negative towards the person. It's negative towards you. Um, you're not trusting God uh, to be the source of that. Now, if you see someone who, like God, has totally blessed, and you say, "Hey, God, I see you bless them in this way," and um, I would, I really want to trust you in blessing me in this way. That's totally. That's what you should be doing. Uh, but whenever you're just mad and bitter and angry about it. Um, and that's envy. Now, boasting comes from, hey, I have this thing, and I did it. It was all me. Look at me. I did it. You know, because it's it's realizing it's not realizing that it was actually the Lord who gave you that thing. Um, no matter what, no matter what it is, whether it's wealth or any sort of character trait or anything like that. So we're going to be looking at these things. So that's where they come from. Okay. So now, how do we avoid these? Is obviously we see that God is our source for everything. That it's the one he's the one who gives it. He's the one who who shows us how to how to do things. It is him. We can't do anything without him. He does it all. He gives it to us, whether we realize it or not, that he is the giver of all good things. So we're gonna look at this. Um we're gonna look at some scripture and we're also gonna I'm gonna tell you guys a couple little testimonies that uh because God is this is something that lately God sort of not this specific not these specific two things, but just in trusting him that God has kind of been taking me through, through personally in my life and reminding me. So hopefully uh, what I can remember and the things that I remember, the things that uh, I tell myself, and uh, hopefully those can help you guys too. With God being the source of everything, we see this over and over again, and we see in the scriptures that Israel, the scriptures about Israel, scriptures were given for our learning, and the scriptures are the stories of Israel a lot of times. So we see in Deuteronomy 8, um, 17 and 18, uh, God's talking to them and he's telling them all the things that have happened and all the things that are going to happen. And he says, you may say to yourself, my power and my own ability have gained this wealth for me. But remember that it is the Lord, your God, who gives you the power to gain wealth in order to confirm his covenant. He swore to your fathers as it is today. Now, so what have I told you guys a lot lately? It is not about you. This is another verse. It is not about you. It is my power and my ability. You may say that it that it was me that did it, but it was actually the Lord. But remember that the Lord your God gives you the power to gain wealth. Why though? In order to confirm his covenant, he swore to your fathers as it is today. So once again, it's not about you. Don't think it is. And you'll be good in that. Um, also, we look at, um, I mean, there's several, several, several examples throughout the Bible. Um, about where God actually gives things and people recognize this, but I love, I love the um, Abraham here in Genesis fourteen, uh, verse eighteen. Whenever after he takes over the armies, 
and he's sitting with Melchizedek. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was a priest to God Most High. He blessed, he blessed, he blessed him and said, Abram is blessed by God Most High, creator of heaven and earth, and I give praise to God Most High, who has handed your enemies over to you. And Abraham, so Melchizedek's saying Abraham is amazing um, because he is blessed by God Most High. And I give praise to God who has handed your enemies over to you. But then Abraham gives Melchizedek a tenth of everything, which is pretty cool there. And you'll see why. Um, and this also, so then the king of Sodom said to Abraham, give to the people, uh, give me the people, but take the possessions for yourself. But Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have raised my hand in an oath to Yahweh, God most high, creator of heaven and earth, that I will not take a thread or sandal strap or anything that belongs to you. Why? So that you can never say I made Abram rich. I will take nothing except what the servants have eaten. And this is showing that Abram is really trusting God in everything that is happening because he actually has like, he has kind of the, the, the spoils of war, if you will, in, in this. And he's saying, no, I'm not going to take any of it for myself, lest, lest you will say that, that you made me rich because I'm going to be trusting in God. I'm going to be trusting in the God who made a covenant with me. And in Genesis 17, we also see that Abram was 99 years old. First one. And the Lord appeared to him saying, I am God almighty live in my presence and be blameless. And I will, I will establish my covenant between me and you, and I will multiply you greatly. So this is God's promise to multiply Abraham or Abram. Is he Abraham? No, he's Abram at this point. Still, um, this is God's, promise here to multiply Abram. He's not saying I'm going to let you multiply or that you are going to multiply. He said, I will greatly multiply you. And we see this time, time and time throughout scripture where God says, I am going to do this for you. I am going to um, establish these things for you. And we have to trust him um, to be able to do those things, to be able to do what he says and to bring about what he's promised. So this is where envy and boasting are squashed is whenever we know and trust God in these things. Because John 15, uh, verse five, I am the vine, you are the branches, the one who remains in me and I in him pr produces much fruit because you can do nothing without me. If anyone does not remain in me, so you can do nothing without me is the, the emphasis I wanted to emphasize there. But also, if anyone does not remain in me, he is thrown aside like a branch and he withers. They gather them thrown into the fire and they are burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you want and it will be done for you. My father is, glor my father is glorified by this, that you produce much fruit and prove to be my disciples. So once again, my father is glorified by this. We are remaining and we are producing much fruit so that the father can be glorified that we produce much fruit and, pr and prove to be his disciples. And going back to love, since this is 1 Corinthians 13, as the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Remain in my love. And if you, com if you keep my commandments, remember obedience from a couple weeks ago, if you keep my commands, you will re remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. So whenever we love him, we will obey his commands. We will do uh, what he has asked us to do, um, not only in scriptures and everything that is written, but also everything that the Lord has spoken to us specifically in our own lives as we walk out our relationship with him. Because if you think about it, like if you really, really think about it, the scriptures are things, are, are like encounters that people have with God that they wrote down and that God decided should stay throughout time in order to be compiled later. Um, and it's just the things that, that God has said, the things that God has done, the encounters that people have had with God and the things that have been written and those have stayed and they are for us to learn. And then we also get to have our own encounters, our own, uh, relationship with God in, in that way. Um, so I look at it as being able to, to go back on all the things that God has done and being able to look at it and also being able to understand who he is so that we can have 
our own relationship with him. So that is what the scriptures say about, um, you know, well, well, some of the scriptures say there's tons and tons of it. There's tons and tons of scripture that say a lot about one section, but I really, you know, we don't need to spend all that time right here in this video about it. Um, but just know and trust God, trust God to give you whatever it is you need right now um, in this moment in your life. And that way, so you won't be envious of something that you don't have. You won't, you won't get better. You won't not trust him in that. And you won't also think that once you got it, that you did it yourself. And that's a trap that a lot of people fall into sometimes is they get, they get whatever it is that uh, they've been asking God for, whatever it is that they've been striving for. And then they, all of a sudden it's like, they're just gone because they forgot the one who actually gave it to them. And so don't do that. Be thankful. Be thankful for, number one, what you have. And also be thankful for the Lord. Like, you have the Lord. That is a lot to be thankful for right there, that the God of the universe lives inside of you, that, that he took his time to be a part of you, to know you. Um, so that's something to be thankful for right there. But I also want to give you guys a couple little testimonies just things that have happened in my life so i remember uh very recently i've probably talked about this on a video before but very recently like we had just just to show like how god cares about the smallest little things we very recently uh our grass was just totally messed up i didn't know how to take care of grass and we had some drought you know we had some winters and and anyways my, my grass was just totally destroyed um so we have an HOA, as a lot of people do, and you know about HOAs. Um, so they like to send you little letters saying, hey, you know, we see that you haven't been taking care of your grass. You need to get new grass or do something about it. At the time, we had zero money for grass, and I was actually kind of worried about, you know, where was I going to get grass, where was I going to get the money from. It wasn't long after that that next door, uh, our neighbors moved in and it's a rental house. So it was a couple days after they moved in, all of a sudden there was like five pallets of sod in their driveway when I came home one day. And uh, I was like, oh, that's cool. They're getting you, they're getting new grass. That's awesome. Now I'm really going to look bad because, <laughs> because our yards were kind of the same, you know, and, and now that there's going to be this like line of nice grass and then just weeds and stuff on my side. But um, so I was like, oh, that's cool. They're getting new grass. And then it was it was a couple of days after that. I was sitting here in the office and there's a window. Um, and I was able to kind of hear what was going on. And I I hear Kiri leaving to take the girls to the library. And and she starts talking with, with somebody. And she's like, what are you guys doing with that? And so I step, I step outside and these guys are dumping the grass onto a truck to be hauled off like a dumpster truck. Like they're not even taking care of it. They're just chucking it. I was like, what in the world is going on? So my neighbor happened to be out there. I met him, said hello. Um, and he said, yeah, I, I don't know where this came from. We didn't order it. Um, there's no records in our landlords, the records of them ordering it. Cause it's a, it's a management company. Um, so he said we called, we couldn't get a hold of anybody who knew anything, and and they said, well, we'll just send it, we'll just send someone to take it out. So that's what they did. And uh, then he looked at me. He said, well, did did you need it? And I said, well, look at my yard. <laughs> of course I need it. You know. Um, so it's just such a blessing. I mean, actually, uh, he helped me. It was he helped me get it off the truck. Um, the guys were you know so gracious and just letting us take it back and put it in my yard. Um, and Sam came over and helped me. And now I have, I mean, my dad actually just complimented me today on how good my grass is doing. Um, so God is the God who gives sod as, uh, Sam has put it for me. Um, and I love saying it that way that, that God takes care of such, such little things like that. Um, so, but also I just wanted to give one more testimony that, has really put me through a lot of times um, whenever I knew that I need to trust God. And I guess it's just because this is just 
one of the earlier ones that I remember because I was old enough to just kind of understand what was happening. Uh, but just for my family, um, when I was, I guess I had just graduated college or not college. I just graduated high school and was starting to do college a little bit. And, um, dad had two jobs. One was at a larger church. One was, uh, on staff at a larger church. And the other job was a security job that we were both, uh, security guards at this company. Um, dad had, uh, seniority. So he had risen to like a supervisor or something, but, um, so anyways, he had two jobs and the church that we were part of had to make some budget cuts. And he was one of the the pastors who really didn't have, didn't have a title. He just kind of filled in where things needed to be filled in. So he was one of the budget cuts that, that got made. And we were really like, we really needed that income as a family in order to do what we were doing and live where we were, where we were living. So I think it was it was that day that that he had found out that he was part of the budget cut. Um, he came home and his old youth pastor, who is in St. Mary's, without knowing what was going on, um, just randomly called him up and said, "Hey, I don't know what you have going on. I don't know. I don't know anything, but we do have we have an opening as an associate pastor down here in St. Mary's, and." Um, we would like you to apply for it. So of course he applied for it and he got it. And that was just the timing of God, the way things work out. And honestly, that's, that's a big part of my story too. It's how I came down here. I won't tell you, I won't tell you guys all that. You can ask me sometime if you ever want to hear a very long story about how I moved around a bit. Um, But it's just, you know, God's provision in that is something that is, that is really, really, really kept me through because it's number one, it's, it's part of my family history now, but it's also part of my story and it's part of how God moved me along. Um, so it's it's a it's a place where I can look back and I can see God working and I can see where I can trust God because God does random. Well, to us they seem random, but God God will take care of you in random ways. You know, even you know manna and all the stuff that happened to the Israelites, all those things like. Those are not natural things that happen to people. You don't just get bread raining from the sky. That's not something that you do yourself. God does it for you. And there are so many things that God can do for you if you'll just trust him and you'll just wait on him and know that he will take care of you in whatever way it is and just just lean on him and know that he is the vine and you are the branch. So as long as you are attached to the vine, then you will grow and you will bear fruit because you're relying on all the nutrients, all the stuff that comes from him. So that is that um, in me and boasting. And uh, we will continue on first Corinthians 13 next time. And I will see you guys later. Have a good night or day, whatever time it is. 